Good morning, everybody. Welcome to St. Peter's. It is good to have you here, especially if you're new with us. Uh, I hope you feel the love of community and especially the love of Jesus, your Savior, today. Um, so here we are still in Easter. And if you're thinking like Easter happened a week ago, um, we have like six weeks of Easter because we follow a church year calendar that helps us just spend time with Jesus in different ways. And so we're, we're still Eastering here, which means we still have our tradition, uh, which we say, I'll say he is risen. And that is your invitation to say, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. So let's, let's practice that. Ready? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So it is still Easter. Christ is still risen, and we're still going to talk about it. Uh, and as I was talking with someone, yes, it's still Easter, but uh, for the kids, it's Easter with school. So have fun. All right. So I want to update you on some of the things coming up, some of the things we've had going on. So as you've heard, right, we are about a month away from our team, uh, eight people from St. Peter's and some of our friends from the community. We are going to Guatemala uh, to help give eyeglasses. And, and we've said, hey, maybe you can't go. Some people say, hey, I'd like to give some money. You can do that too. But our idea was, man, how do we get everyone to have an option to participate? And maybe not everyone, because maybe you're one of those people who doesn't have these on your face or doesn't wear contacts then you got to go find a friend who does. But we've been collecting eyeglasses, and our initial goal was 300, and then we hit like 1,200-something in a, in a week. So I, my joke is, it's, I, I typoed. I meant 3,000. Well, of that 3,000 goal, uh, we now have 1,500. I put it up there. It's like 1,570. I forget the number. I just wrote it this morning. But we have 1,500 glasses. What I just learned was that this group we're going to give them to called MOST, it's Mission Opportunities Short Term is what it stands for. But most around the world gives out about 3,000 glasses a year, which means we just funded half a year of their glasses. So they're going to take those at the end of April. They're going to fix them up, and they're going to help send them. So if you are still able to participate in that, great. If not, pray. Pray for the work of God. Pray for us to come back and share the story of God's work with you. All right. A couple other things. Uh, we are now just a week out uh, from our first uh, youth group. Our middle school youth group will be meeting here at the church at 530. Uh, that'll be Marcus Brooklyn Routley, uh, and then I'll be helping them. All right? They are the leaders, and I get to help people lead. That is the goal of St. Peter's here. So keep an eye on that. If you want more information, you can go online. For everything, you can go online to our Next Steps button on our website, and there's you just search it. You'll find it there. So if you want to give to Guatemala, that's there. If you want to uh, join the youth group, you can sign up there. Uh, this one is not on there, but hey, you've got a paper in there. It's a wonderful invitation. In your packets this morning, you got some version of an invite to a retirement party for Miss Zana Heck. There you are. She's back from sunnier places. She brought the sun. Thank you, Zana. All right. Zana Heck is our uh, principal and has been, and she's been a teacher here for a long time, and she is an impact to the community and a wonderful servant to Christ. And she will continue to be those things, but... We're going to celebrate the fact that she specifically did that role here. So you can see all the information there, where to RSVP, and you have that. The last thing I want to share with you this morning about what's coming up is we are still working towards our out-oriented small group. Uh, I spent this morning, as I was getting ready, I was listening to a podcast from a group. It's, it's a pastor down in Phoenix. Uh, they call themselves Unite Leadership Collective, and they have great podcasts. They just interview people. And one of them is the former district president of, I think, Texas, a guy named Bob Newton. And Bob was talking. He, he has been a missionary his whole life. And Bob said in this interview that in order to us, we are now outsiders of the culture as Christians. We don't have people coming to us. They're not filling our churches 85 times on, a sun, or on Easter Sunday. We now need to really, truly get in that act of being missionaries, not to, not to Africa like the Heinies, not to Guatemala like eight of us, but to, to our, our culture right here. And he says that starts with kind relationships. Literally, we need to first be people that people look to and say, that person loved me. I wonder what they're about. And the way that we're trying to kind of start that and really ask God to bless us and challenge us and lead us is through this uh, step out to serve small group. These papers are not with you. They're laying out here on a table next to a sign up. And the goal of this small group is to gather a few groups of people. And then we're going to pray about it. And then we're going to go do something here in May 
to bless our neighbors. And it's not change the world, it's proclaim Christ. So uh, uh, some ideas that people have thrown around is what if we go knit somewhere uh, where people don't usually get social interaction? What if we buy pizzas to give to our doctor's office? What if we instead bake cookies and hand them to our neighbors and just say, happy you're our neighbor? There's all sorts of ideas. But if you aren't an ideas person, you're going, hey, I just want to help, then sign up out there. Join a group. If you're willing to lead a group, do that. And hey, if you're thinking of signing up on a paper, you can also go online to our website, click the next steps button, and click step out to serve small group. All right, but let's go out and show the love of Christ. That's really the goal of this. All right, but now we're here today, and today we receive the love of Christ. So let's do that. Let's hear all the goodness of God for us today. If you would please stand as we start our worship. Test, right? He is risen. He is risen. 
He is risen indeed. Alleluia. You passed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we confess our sins to God our Father using the words of the first commandment. What is the first commandment? You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. We take this moment to reflect on how we have failed, how we are broken, how we are imperfect, knowing that our sins are forgiven by God. So ask ourselves, how have we failed to fear, love, and trust in God above all things? If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I am chosen in Jesus. I am forgiven in Jesus. I am loved in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now we join with one voice to pray to our God, and today we're going to use Psalm number 148. Uh, if you would please read and pray along with me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His heavenly armies. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, highest heavens, and you waters above the earth. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For the, He commanded, and they were created. He set them in position forever and ever. He gave an order that will never pass away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Brothers, sisters, friends, the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we come to you today receiving the gift that is you, the light of the world that has come into the darkness. And now, Jesus, as we stand here as people of light, protect us from the darkness that, that we are so accustomed to. Lord, protect us from the guilt and shame we feel being exposed in the light. Lord, help us to see that, yes, we sin, but you forgive sinners. That is why you came. So, Lord, refresh us with peace in our hearts that you are not against us and send us out, Lord, with that same proclamation that you are for people to heal them and save them. Amen. If you would please be seated for our readings.
Today our first reading comes to us from Acts chapter 4. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them. For as many as were owners of land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now today, our second reading comes to us from the book of John, first book of John, John, first John chapter one. There we go, I got there. All right, here's what John writes. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest. And we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you. So that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you. That God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of, his, of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all our sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you would please stand for our gospel reading. Today the Holy Gospel is from John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the eve on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nail, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Thank you. 
God's grace, his mercy, and his peace be to you now and forever. Amen. So this was a really hard week. Um, after Easter, we always have the story of Thomas. And you may know his nickname. Like in the church, we've called him Doubting Thomas. And every year, I usually go to bat for this guy uh, because he's, a complete, he's just completely normal Thomas. And I really wanted to go there, but then I saw that thing from 1 John. And so that's going to be, if you want to look it up, uh, 1 John is where we're going to be today. But we're going to bounce around. Um, I got really hooked on that 1 John because I noticed something as I was reading this text. He's going on and he's just sharing the gospel. right? I, I hope you heard it. He's just sharing good news. In fact, it's such good news that we say it. I, I hope it sounded familiar, right? We say this as we confess our sins. That, right, if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and is just, forgives our sins, right? But as familiar as that text is, it was the part about light. See, this, this is a letter written by John, right? The same guy who wrote the, the Gospel of John and Revelation also wrote this letter. And it hit me that he's writing about Jesus, who is the light in the darkness. And I joked in my head, I'm like, man, this guy... Just, Turns out he's written the same paper like five times, right? That's what it felt like because does anyone know how the, the book of John starts, right? He starts with like Genesis. He says, in the beginning was God and the word and the word was God and the word was with God. But a paragraph later, he, instead of calling Jesus the word, adds another phrase. He says, the light was coming into the world where it was dark and the darkness could not overcome it. Okay, so he starts off his gospel by saying Jesus is the light. And then he now has this letter where he says Jesus is the light. And we're studying Revelation, a Bible study. I love the book of Revelation. I've been going through it for the last few years. It became a big question back around COVID. That's when I started studying it. When people are like, Pastor, is the world ending? And I'm like, pretty sure it's probably not, but it kind of always is. The world is always kind of ending right now. But sure enough, how does he call Jesus the light. And the whole thing is about light. And in the end, as Jesus returns and recreates the world, there will be no need for the sun, he says, because the light has come into the world and the radiant presence of Christ makes it so that there is truly no darkness remaining. And so I started to think, man, think of all the times John wrote about light, all the times this guy John, as he follow Jesus or learn from the other disciples or as he was present, how many times he saw the light of Christ? Not just like the light, but like literally the like turn the light bulb on the light of Christ. Right there on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus stands and he shows him true self for a moment. Not just as a man, but God in flesh. Jesus radiates robed in white standing on what looks to be shining ground and he is the light. John goes to the, the empty tomb and eventually encounters Jesus robed again in white. The women at the tomb before him saw an angel radiating light. God is connected to light 
as opposed to darkness in a very literal and yet a very metaphorical kind of way. And so I really wanted to hang on that, to just kind of sit with John in his consistency. John, who again and again and again wants us to know that it is good news for God, our Lord Jesus, to be the light. And we really resonate with this, right? If you've been in a dark room for a long time working, you start to feel bummed. In fact, we even have a term for it uh, in Michigan, right? We have to have seasonal affective disorder, sad, because we go too many months without light. Which is why, I don't know, yesterday, I hope you were outside if you were able to, other than I think people keep saying allergies are kicking in. Fingers crossed, Lord, please don't. But sitting outside in the light yesterday and actually getting vitamin D, oh, we love the light as creatures, but we also have kind of a, a frenemy sort of relationship with light. We get worried about it sometimes. It, it unnerves us. Light is very powerful in our lives to the point that, that, yes, we see Jesus on transfiguration and he is there radiant in light, but what do his disciples do? They actually collapse to the ground in fear, almost like in the fetal position because it's so bright. We have a weird relationship with light. In fact, uh, right now, I think a lot of the buzz we were talking about in Bible study is the eclipse coming, the absence of light for a moment. That feels weird. Um, I got to be under one, I don't know, seven years ago, give or take. We were in St. Louis, and St. Louis was a 98%. So we gathered on the seminary's campus, the pastor school, and that's where pastors are made, the seminary's campus, and we had a cookout, and someone prayed, and then it gets dark. And I think the funniest thing was all the birds stopped tweeting, and like 30 seconds later, all the crickets are going. Like they think like, oh, I guess shift starts early today. But it was unnerving. Right? Even nature itself went, whoa, something just changed. And yet, this is good news for us. It is good news that the light has come into the world, that he died and rose, and the darkness has not overcome the risen Lord, the light. But again, our relationship is odd. It is kind of intimidating to be exposed to the light. Right? There's a lot of times that we feel vulnerable in our lives, some more seriously than others, but the one that I think of is, you know, when you're young and you're learning to go to the dentist for the first time and they want to get that good look, they bring in this light, right? And it's specifically designed, I don't know how, we can ask the professionals in the room, but it doesn't shine directly on your face, but it gives enough light until that one time as a kid, the, the person left it a little at angle and it was just shining in my face the whole time. So now I've got this person poking on my teeth and the light is bright in my face and it felt very exposed. Being exposed to the light feels weird. It's like we have this old, you know, like a, a PI or, I don't know, a, a detective thing, right? You want to put the pressure on the guy so he confesses. You put him on the table. You turn the light at him and you shine him, right? Exposed. Everything is visible. You can't hide anything, guy. That's what we're trying to get across. The light shines on your mouth. You can't hide anything now. Get that plaque. The light shines on you as you're being investigated. You can't hide anything either. That is that strange relationship we have with light, with being exposed. There's a fear, a real, true, and, and reasonable fear that we have of being exposed to the light. To have everything seen, like we're walking through an x-ray machine or one of those things you do at the, the airport where you gotta like stop mid jumping jack and they see through you. Whatever you have, it's there, it's visible. We feel this when we have medical tests, right? There's kind of nothing more uh, uh, revealing than medical tests. Drink this weird flavor thing and now we're going to look at your body because there's heavy metals in here or sit in this tube for a while while it vibrates around you aggressively and we will see you. We will see everything. And to some level, that's what Jesus has come. He is the Lord. He knows everything. He knows our sins, which is why John writes in this letter today that if we were to say we didn't sin, he says that makes God a liar because he knows better. He knows that we're broken. He knows that we've sinned and failed, that, that we don't follow him perfectly. He knows our addictions. He knows our inabilities. He knows our shame. He knows our guilt. We are truly exposed to the light. We are 
vulnerable. And that's good news, but it, in our gut, doesn't always feel like it. Feels like we are small. Like when you turn the light on in a sketchy hotel and you see things scatter. We are, sometimes we feel like those critters. Right? The light is turned on and, and our temptation is to run, to hide. No, Lord, don't look at me. Because we know he sees everything. We feel it. I mean, we go through relationships. In fact, I, I joke about this all the time, that at my last congregation, and I've got a list of us here now. I've got a new list. But in my last congregation, there was a list of us who would ask each other on the way out of church, how are you? We'd shake hands and we'd go, good. And we just lied to each other openly. We know. How are you feeling? Crap. You too? Cool. But we went... I'm good. And, uh, you know, sometimes you'd see that person wince on the way out and you'd go, how are you really today, though? Like, like, let's expose this to the light a bit so I can love you, so you can love me. And yes, don't worry, we do that here just fine. How are you doing? Good. Sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not, but that is a vulnerability we have to be exposed to the light. But the light is good. It just feels at the time like it's not. See, it, it feels like there's a shoe waiting to drop as we scatter as bugs back into the darkness so that we can protect ourselves, keep ourselves hidden. Um, I, I couldn't say waiting for the shoe to drop without thinking of this. There is a professor at the seminary who teaches us Greek. He actually helped, like, translate the Bible, and he is a quirky dude, right? Now, I said at the seminary. Everyone at the seminary is quirky, all right? That's... But he would say when you're translating, he'd actually... In, no, I'm not going to, well, I don't know, I'm half tempted. Heidi knows this story. He would, he had slip-on shoes like I would, and he'd say, men, when you're translating, you've got to finish the sentence and wait for the other shoe to drop. And he'd actually take a shoe and flick it in the air. And it would drop somewhere random in the room. And that's really tempting to do right now, but then you'd have to watch me put my shoe back on. Right? But it, it feels like we're waiting for the shoe to drop. Oh my gosh, God can see everything. What if he decides, I'm too broken? What if he sees that thing I thought I was hiding and, and I don't want that scene? I don't know if God can love me. I know other people might react that way. What if he's one of them? That's what we feel, but this is good news. And here's how. The light exposes everything so that we don't have to hide in darkness. So that the first thing that God creates is a place where truth can happen. So that the healing can happen. Why do we go in MRI machines? Why do we expose our mouths and let them be worked on? Why do we go through these things and be like literally seen through? Why do we go through that at the airport so that we can be seen perfectly exposed? It's so that we can be healed and kept safe. And likewise, that's what Jesus does. He says, don't pretend to hide it. I see it already and I'm not going to reject you. I came for you because I came for sinners and broken people. Now bring it out into the light where we can see forgiveness. Bring it out into the light where I will see your brokenness and I will love you and I will give you my spirit and he will work in you more than you can work anyway on your own self. Let the work of God happen in us. Instead of hiding in darkness and living in the shame and the guilt and wondering the worry if people will discover let the light shine so that we would be known, but not just known, but accepted despite our brokenness. Because dwelling in shame and guilt forever is no answer, but it is an option. Instead, Jesus, the light of the world, gives an answer. Come into the light. I see you, I know you, and I forgive you. I see right through you, and what I see, I love. I don't hate you. Jesus says, I love you. In fact, I died for you because I love you. I rose for you because I love you. I came for the broken, is what he told his own disciples. Being in the light is intimidating. And yet by being in the light, we have truth and forgiveness. This is so built into our faith that when we come together on Sunday morning, how do we start? Lord, I am a poor, miserable sinner. 
Not many people go around saying that, but we do. Why? Because we know what comes next. I, as your brother in Christ, the guy who you called to stand up here every day, I get to say what we say to each other all the time. You are forgiven. Not because of me, but because he is. You are forgiven in the light. That makes us a community of light. Here we have peace and no, we're never going to be perfectly exposed to broken humans. It, it, it hurts, but to Lord, uh, he knows and he loves us. But what I hope is that here in this community, this in-gathering of people, that you would hear Jesus' words spoken to you and you would speak to others. To be able to know someone in this room or who comes to this building well enough to hear them say, I see you, I know you, and I forgive you. It might be your spouse, it might be a friend, it might be some other confidant, but to, it might be me, whoever it is, to hear you are known. You don't have to hide here, get rid of the shame, be forgiven and set free. That is what a community of light does. And then when we go into the world, we can share that same peace. We can actually tell people, come out of the dark, gain trust with me. If we are vulnerable together, I can tell you what Jesus does. He heals the broken. Should we walk as children of the light is what John says. Then there will be truth and peace. We won't do it perfectly, but by God's grace, we live in it perfectly. We, people who like darkness, who worry about exposure, we find peace. Our sins are forgiven. And it's because Jesus Christ is indeed the light of the world and the darkness will not overcome. It is because he is risen. Say it with me. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. That we can be exposed and forgiven. Amen. And now I invite you, if you would please, to stand. And join me. As we use the words of the Apostles' Creed, a nearly 2,000-year-old confession of our faith to remind each other what it is of the good news of being with our God and in his light. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear Father, we pray to you because we, as we just confessed, we believe in the forgiveness of sins. Not because we've earned it, not because we're good enough, but because you love us enough that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, that he might die and rise and then give us his Holy Spirit, that, that now we have peace in our soul. Because, Lord, we know that when we sin, we are forgiven. We who dwelled in darkness now live in the light. And as intimidating as that can feel, Lord, we trust you to love us, to know we're broken, and that's okay. Lord, in your mercy. And, Father, we pray for you to shine your light on all that we do here at St. Peter's. Lord, please help us as we go through the process of searching, building a team, and making calls. Uh, Lord, as we extend job offers across the church and school, Lord, bring to light those people who you want to have serve. Bless their considerations as they think about, Lord, where are you directing them? Lord, we also pray here at St. Peter's for all who are healing. Lord, you know our brokenness, you see it clearly, and you love everyone. 
So, Lord, for everyone dealing in pains of body and soul, mind and spirit, Lord, bless them with healing. Give them the people and, and treatment they need. Lord, in your mercy. And, Father, we pray for missionaries around the world, but that's also us. Lord, we are people of light, and as you told your disciples, as the Father has sent me, so now I am sending you. So, Lord, you send us out, and that, too, is intimidating. We are not you, but you instead give us your spirit. You give us a community, and you send us out, Lord, to serve and love and proclaim the goodness of the light into lives. So, Lord, help us to do that with, with joy and courage. Lord, in your mercy. And, Father, we pray for all the students at Ferris, but especially those Christians on campus, that they would be a light of patience, of peace, sometimes needing to turn the other cheek, Lord, but always there offering forgiveness and love to people who are, just like us, are imperfect. Lord, give them strength and peace as they go through their day-to-day. -day. Lord, in your mercy. And, Father, we pray for the world around us. We pray for leaders that as they seek to care for us, you would give them wisdom. Bless also the military personnel of our state, community, and nation with safety. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we pray for our school, that it be a source of light each and every day. It's in session, and including this summer with the, with the care this summer. But Lord, bring to us people who need to hear the light as well as be prepared for their vocations in this world. Lord, we, we trust you in this fashion. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> and Father, for all other things, we give them to you. But now we pray, as your own son Jesus, the light of the world, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If you would please be seated. We take this moment uh, here at St. Peter's to worship God in another way. We give back to him what he has first given to us. Jesus says, you are my stewards, I give you many blessings, and we respond by saying, Lord, we trust you more than these things. So our giving is an act of worship that goes to serve our collective mission here together. Uh, you can give physically today, you can always go online, again, that next steps button, there is a way to give, and it goes to the same, same place so that we can do the same mission together. Uh, if you are new here, I'd rather direct your attention, in front of you there are these white cards, we call them connect cards, but... If you fill your name and a way to contact you on the white cards, what I will do is reach out to you and say, hi, welcome to St. Peter's. What's your story uh, and, and how do you want to follow Jesus? Because that's our goal is to follow Jesus together, to be imperfect people in community together. So if you fill those out, you can drop those in the basket as it comes along here or hand it to me afterwards. You can tell who I am because today I'm the guy in the white dress, right? That stands out. But thank you for your generosity. Thank you for connecting with us. We look forward to all God is doing. Holy, holy, thousand generations pulling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the land. If you've been forgiven, and if you've been free. 
Please stand. Now we trust another of Jesus' promises as we go to communion. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, it is truly good, right, and beneficial for us to thank you at all times and in all places for the uncountable blessings you give to us and to your creation. We thank and praise you most of all because you have had mercy on us by giving us your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, so that we would not perish but have eternal life. Holy Father, grant us your Spirit, so that by your grace we may come to the meal Jesus sets for us and believe that Jesus' body and blood are given to us today for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord our God, because of this gift, we praise and thank you. Amen. In communion, Jesus comes to us in a promise. He says that the bread is also his body. The wine is also his blood. This promise is given so that we may trust that we receive forgiveness of our sins as we eat the communion meal. We approach this table as repentant yet forgiven sinners. We gather as one body with one belief and we come to this blessing remembering the words of Jesus, the Savior. Here at St. Peter's, we truly believe that it's a miracle that Jesus says, this is my body and blood for you for the forgiveness of your sins. So we invite you to commune with us if you believe that, yes, you are a sinner, that you have been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and that you want your sins forgiven by this miracle that is truly bread and body, wine and blood. Uh, if you're not sure what any of that means, maybe you're new here to St. Peter's or even to the Christian faith, that's okay too. Uh, you are welcome to just sit, kind of observe, and I hope you see why this is so important to us. If you would like to come up uh, and you're still not sure, then go ahead and cross your arms when I, when I come to you, and, and I'll just pray for you that the Lord bless you, because he wants to and he will. But now, let's go ahead and hear from Jesus himself, straight from Scripture, what does he say about this meal? Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
Please stand. 
Hear once more the good news today. Now may this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you to eternal life. Go in his peace. Amen. Our sins are forgiven, we pray. Holy Lord, we praise you and we thank you for giving us the gift of your body and your blood. May it keep us in true faith and in peace until you return to restore us and the whole world. With all of creation, with all believers, we praise you and the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. If you please be seated. Actually, I'm going to belay my own order. As we sing this, would you please stand? church. Now, please be seated. I said belay that order. Uh, whenever I go to a friend's place and they have like Alexa and they say, Alexa, would you please? I yell, belay that order, Alexa, and it does. It's so empowering. All right, here at St. Peter's, we have the three relationships that Jesus did, right? Jesus had a perfect relationship up with his father who had sent him in with his disciples and also out with the world that he routinely went into, this messy world, the light going into the darkness and, and curing and healing and forgiving it. Likewise, we try and have these relationships too, right? Up with the Father, in here together with one another, and out with the people who do not yet know that Jesus has come to save them. Not to abuse them, not to condemn them, but to save them. And uh, normally I tell a story here, and I have one I wish I could share, but it's one of those that's I can't, but let's just say relationships among Christians over time with people are beautiful. We need relationships with non-believers. It's how God blesses them and also us. But instead, I, I want to tell you something. We're about to leave next week. Uh, Pastor Colin will be back, and uh, Heidi and I will be with a bunch of uh, pastors and their wives out in Nebraska. If it gets too out of whack, the thing will topple over. Well, we're not Jesus, so we don't keep this three-legged stool of up, in, and out perfectly balanced. We all have kind of our preferred, and generally people have one they really kind of dislike.